Meanwhile, citizens have now uh, more than ever got more interested in how they're governed by the political class. And now that the 2023 general elections are knocking, the electorate are asking questions about the balance of power and the limits of the executive arm of government. Also, they want to better engage their representatives to allow for more participation of the people at the grassroots in how they are represented. To look at these and other issues, we have joining us live in the studio, Honorable Sheikh Golula, the formerly represented a pair constituency too at the Lagos State House of Assembly. Yeah, welcome to our primetime news. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for coming. Uh, now, we, we want to look at um, balance of power and how the people are represented. Uh, Lagos is about the most popular state in Nigeria, and uh, you were very prominent at the House during your time. And we know how politics goes in Lagos. Um, sometimes the people ask questions around uh, how you are able to achieve one of your functions, which is uh, the balance of power with the executive arm of government. Um, and of course, the. Uh, uh, <laughs> <sighs> So we want to know. We want to know. Um, well, uh, we understand. We understand uh, when it comes to politics in Lagos. We understand that some people are answerable to some other people, and there is the issue of Godfatherism and all that. So then, how are you able to uh, maneuver and achieve balance of power? Well, um, thank you very much for coming up with this um, question, especially especially at this period. Um, when we talk about the legislative arms of government and the executive arm and the judiciary, uh, the three arms of government, the number one that people don't really look at is the legislative arm of government. People tend to think it's the executive arm of government because the governor is considered to be the number one, and you have the number two, number three coming, and it, 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 it's, it's really, really, it's not so. Um, the number one is the legislative arm of government because that is where things are done. For instance, let me tell you something. In the first um, term of uh, the current administration, we have a situation where the, the head of the legislative arm, Bukola Saraki, the Senate president, and Yakubu Dogara, the speaker, could not allow the president to achieve some of the programs and policies that he promised the public. And that shows you the power that he lets, because that is where a lot of policies have been cooked. And if, no matter what, your budget, what Mr. President, what Mr. Governor is going to be spent, it is at the House that they will be decided. When you bring in a bill, it's dead on arrival. Whatever thing you want to do, it is the House, those people you have elected to be your representative at the House. And that is why I love at times when people are talking about Mr. President, I want, we want so so person to be president. You can be president and you will not be able to do anything. And that's what happened to Buhari in the first time of his, of his administration. Because the House, the legislative arm of government, it is where, that is where uh, things have been done. Um, for instance, we do oversight, and when you represent the people, you, you talk about getting feedback. One of the things that distinguished me in the house then was the fact that I am always having this quarterly feedback with my constituents. I always engage stakeholders within the constituents, cons my constituency every quarter. And that gave me an opportunity Whatsoever they need, I've been able to hear from them directly. And I, I was able to go back to the house and present that which they have sent me to do at the house. If you see any legislator who is not coming back home or getting feedback from the house or from, from his constituents, that legislator cannot last. And that is one of the things that has affected our political space. People just believe that the governor or the president is paramount. Is paramount. Okay, but now, that isn't I, I'm the, happy, the situation. I'm happy with the fact that um, you're able to establish a communication line with your constituents. Uh, that's commendable. In, in any case, um, how do you now achieve um, 
uh, a balance between being loyal to um, someone you, you consider a political mentor and the people you're answerable to. Uh, looks like there's many times there is, uh, uh, there's a gap, there's a gap, there's a huge gap between um, swinging to the left or the right, where do I go? Uh, uh, you know, when you face um, uh, so two roads, speaking, which so one do you take? Speaking, um, it's a myth that people believe that uh, there's somebody in Lagos or whatever that is dictating what is happening in the house. No. You, we, we are giving a free hand. We are giving an opportunity to express yourself. Any legislator that will tell you that somebody stop him or her from doing his uh, legislative duty, that, that can be in Lagos. And that's why you see Lagos is working. We are all, we might, you might say people will definitely influence your coming in into the office. So once you are being elected, because all over the world, what you consider to be God for federalism is what is practiced all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's not just limited to Lagos or to Nigeria. Yeah. You have people who will influence your election one way or the other. There are people that people are consulting, even as I, as I speak with you now, around Nigeria, around Lagos, consulting them for the purpose of getting elected. So how do you maintain loyalty to a Your mentor? Loyalty must always be to the people that elected you. The moment you shift that loyalty that the people, because you, you are serving the people, you are holding um, their mandates given to you by the people on their behalf. So you must always be answerable to the people, not to any other fellow. And that is why every legislator must know that your being in, the, in, in, in that office is because the electorate elected you. We have seen people that some powerful people have decided that this is a fellow they wanted. And at the end of the day, the, the people will say, no, we are not going to elect this fellow. And that will be the end of that fellow. So it's not, it, you must know that the, the real power belongs to the people. And how do you let the people say, I want to bring together balance of power and um, people engagement, the grassroots engagement in, in your duties now. I want to bring it, I want to marry the two. So how do you then uh, hold the executive by its juggler to ensure that you are able to uh, deliver the mandate of the people and engage the, the people at the grassroots? Definitely. Um, once you are representing the people and you have a mandate, because that is what's going to earn you another time or earn you their votes, Next, when next you go back home. So you must always consult them. And you must always be the face, be the voice, be the hair, be what they would, they represent, you are the representative of the people. So you must always go back to them. And every governor, every president will not see you as his or her enemy. They must see you as someone who is trying to defend the, his people, defend our people or our constituent to ensure that they have dividend of democracy and they have good governance in his constituency. So nobody's going to blame you for challenging. The, that, that is why I told you that the most powerful harm of government is the legislative that have the opportunity of impeaching the president, impeaching the, the, the governor. So the governor is answerable. That's why you see the president or the governor or the executive arm of government always coming back to the legislative, even during budget presentation or they want to appoint anybody. Whatever thing they are doing, it is still the legislative arm of government that will determine how that program or policy of government is going to be done. And that is why they also have that responsibility of what we call the oversight function, that they can always go back and say, we ask you to spend X, Y, you spend Y. Why have you not spent the X? And I mean, they must ask questions. And for every legislator, you must perform that duty credibly well that everybody will be able to say, yes, we have a representative. Honorable, 2023 is knocking again. And we're going back to the polls to elect our representatives. Um, and the people at the grassroots, we want better representation. And um, 
it's a concern that many times uh, the people at the grassroots uh, cannot even reach those representing them at the House of Assembly anymore. You know, they go to the polls to elect them, and then when they want to get elected, they smile at them, they play with them, they relate well with them, they connect with them. You know, uh, once they get elected, they can't even reach them anymore. So how do you bridge this gap? Now, uh, that is one of the things that I've seen in this particular election, that people are focusing more on the president, presidential election, on the governorship election, rather than focusing on those who are going to determine if we are going to have good governance or not. And they are the legislative arm of government. So they, those, are the, those are the people that are going to have, uh, um, they, they are the ones that are going to give you that vote yeah. that you need to win. And they are the ones that are going to represent you at the, uh, at the uh, National Assembly or at the legislative hub to ensure that you, you have that uh, good governance that you have been craving for. Not the president, not the governor. It's so sad now that nobody is even talking about them. And a lot of them are just being, you will just vote hurriedly maybe to, for a, a particular party or for a particular individual that at the end of the day, you will not be able to have control over. You will not be able to even have the hair of such a person. And that is where the problem lies. So we must look at the area of the legislative arm of government, which is critical to the sustainability or to, to, to a situation where you can have good governance in in, in the system. In the system. Thank you very much. Um, my last word to you. Uh, so, what should we expect from you? What What's your next um, political move? I asked you in, in private. You You didn't want to divulge. Maybe you divulge now. <laughs> <laughs> well, my political move is to ensure that my party, the APC, uh, wins the presidential election. And uh, talking about Ashraf Bola Ahmed Tinubu and the governor of Lagos State. That, and my senator, that is my major concern as far as uh, my, my move is now. That's my ambition, to ensure that those people are in office and also every uh, APC um, members okay. or candidate that we do have. Okay. Uh, we'll wait till the campaign starts uh, proper and to, to ask you to come back and say this again. Thank you very much for joining us on our prime time. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.